senior living today. We had a great program last week and we have even a better program this week. You called in, but before we get started, we're going to tell you about last week, how we had some calls. But Cheryl, who are our sponsors? Uh, this evening, we're very fortunate we have Wires Inc. here in Rocky Mount as one of our sponsors. And of course, you, you, I know you've seen their store out, out on the highway there. And if you need your $82,000 truck or your $820 <laughs> truck with a new bed liner, that's where you go to get your bed liner. Outstanding. Brian West and the, and the staff out there are great customer service people, good people to work with. And we also have Brett Hill. Mm -hmm. Brett Hill. With his real estate firm. Yep. And Brett has a uh, new staff coming in, mm -hmm. several, several people coming on board now. He's really expanded, doing great. Uh, tri First Triangle, First Realty Triangle East is, is the name of his operation. Uh, also, I've known Brett for quite a few years, and he's a good guy to work with. Very, very knowledgeable people in their field. So. And you want to give both of them a call yeah. just to touch base with them. They believe in our senior market, where we're working, the counties that we reach. Last week, if you recall, we had Caroline Crawford from the law firm of, Cheryl, who was that law firm? Pierce, Pierce Law Group. Pierce Law Group, answering questions on trust, mm -hmm. wills, final expenses, and we ask you to call in. And boy, did you call in. Oh my gracious, over 65 calls came in, and 21 of them came in for the guests we have tonight. You had some great questions, and I'm not even going to drag it out any further. Mm -hmm. Cheryl, who is, who, who's with us tonight? We are very fortunate this evening. We have Erica Edmondson Hello. with Hello. us. She is representing Wilson, <coughs> no, I'm sorry, Home Health Care of Wilson. Mm -hmm. There we I go. The Wilson. Uh, yes, sir. And what we're going to talk about this evening is just, you know, using home health care and what it really means, uh, you know, how you get it, how you pay for it, mm. you know, what it can do for you. And this is something that, you know, I've dealt with in my family. And uh, the things that Erica's going to talk about this evening, I wish I had known 10 years ago. Uh, so this is going to be a great, great program uh, of information for you this evening. But Erica, tell us, give us a little bit of your background. Um, my name is Erica Edmondson. I am the account executive for Home Health of Wilson. Um, currently, I am here in, Ro in Rocky Mount, Great Old Rocky Mount. Um, but Wilson, um, Home Health of Wilson, covers all the surrounding counties, and I am from one of those surrounding counties, Halifax County. Um, grew up in Roanoke Rapids, went to Halifax Academy all my life, mm -hmm. and then I am an ECU pirate. Um, <laughs> recently pirates. graduated, that's right, <laughs> he, um, recently graduated with my Master of Healthcare Administration, so mm -hmm. healthcare is now the realm I live in, and okay. um, helping seniors who can, you know, navigate the realm they're in, and the families that are helping those right. seniors is, is really right. the goal. Right. So, what is home health and the difference to home care? Right, so um, we find a, a lot of times people don't know the difference in home health and home care. In our world, home health is a skilled service. So that is a skilled nurse, RN, LPN, home health mm -hmm. aide, and physical uh, speech and occupational therapy. Okay. Um, sometimes a patient may just need someone to cook, clean, sit with them. That is home care. That is personal care okay. services. Okay. Um, and that is not normally covered by your insurances. That's normally a private pay out of pocket deal. Mm -hmm. When you have a skilled need such as um, a diabetic foot wound or a fall and you had a hip replacement and you live alone, home health can come in and be usually it's two to three times a week be that clinical set of eyes on you for the time mm -hmm. that they're there which is normally 45 minutes to about two hours they don't stay and just sit they come in and do the clinical needs right. and then they go but you may have multiple disciplines in you may have nursing in for wound care you may also have physical therapy in for rehabilitating that knee or that hip and you may have occupational therapy in for those activities of daily living such as transitioning to the bed and things like that. So you can get multiple disciplines and stack those to where you're being seen every day. Okay. In the home. Right, right. And so how how does a person get qualified? 
So a referral would come from your physician. Now granted, you could call us directly and say, what do I need to do? Mm -hmm. um, but the referral has to stem from your primary care doctor. It is okay. super important to have a primary care doctor for all ages because as adults, you don't know, when things happen, they're normally bad things, and they're normally quick, urgent true. things, and you don't want to end true. up in an emergency room because you don't have someone to call. So having a primary okay. care doctor is that liaison for you, and they would, they would facilitate all referrals. So they would basically send us your last office note, your demographics, so that's your insurance, your name, emergency contacts, mm -hmm. um, and this, it's really not a lot of paperwork, but just to prove the need that you need us um, normally a current med list helps and right. once we get that information and that home health order which is them saying this person needs um, home health evaluation for physical therapy and needs med management with nursing it could be very broad like that for most cases um, and that's all we need to legally go in and see the patient so if you know my dad lives at home by himself he's 90 years old so if he falls walking out of the house you know and, and and we call the EMTs come and get him taken to the emergency room and they're you know taking care of him there what would be the process if it's if they say well you know he's gonna he's broken his hip and it's gonna be a, mm -hmm. a while to so when it goes through the hospital that happens just as frequently um, most of the referrals for us come from a hospital discharge or a physician okay. um, so that if they're in the hospital that case manager or discharge planner should initiate hey you can't go home in this state by yourself okay. you're going to need more help than your family can provide so they should initiate right. and it's always okay to ask what kind of services can I get because they have lists okay so if you don't qualify for home health maybe you qualify for some personal care aid services at a discount um, sometimes there are rates that apply depending on what needs you have and insurances you have mm -hmm. um, but they would initiate it and then they would handle all the paperwork they would say, call me and say, hey, Eric, I've got a referral, um, needs PT, OT from a hip fracture, and he's looking to go home on the 16th. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we would get all the information from them, and that way the family's mm -hmm. out of it. It's just they know we do what's called a welcome call. So once we receive that referral and it's in our system, we call that patient the day before and say, are you okay for us to come Tuesday around lunchtime, or do you have a better time? Okay. And that's when we get to know the patient and when we get to know the family who's going to be there. Because um, the true start of care visit take, can take up to two hours just getting all the information. Okay. Cheryl, can I add something? Just one quick question. My father, just like Cheryl's, we both have age, just like a lot of our seniors out here in the viewing area. Mm -hmm. Do you coordinate with veterans, assistants, people that come yeah. in? Do you, go ahead. So we are... Um, we have programs for veterans assistance um, okay. so we work with all the local VAs so the most local one would be Greenville um, but they're the Durham all the others um, and they operate the same they know the same same paperwork required from them um, so they it is something that we uh, and I know my sister hospice branch they had quite a few veterans on recently we try to do something special Veterans Day and they presented pins Mm -hmm. um, like actually a pinning ceremony mm -hmm. for those who could attend. Um, so that is actually one of the more recent, we've always been able to take the veterans insurance and, and see okay. patients with that insurance because sometimes there are exclusions. But um, recently there's a program actually to showcase them more. So that's funny you ask that because we don't know all the details yet, but that's coming. Okay, good deal. So that's a new program that's coming in mm -hmm. for you. Okay. All right. But as it stands, we can accept patients, and they would just operate the same way any other facility referring to us would. That's okay. great news. And what counties specifically do y'all kind of concentrate in around here? So we are, our um, home branch is Wilson, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, we are in a joint partnership with Wilson Medical, so we're pretty close to their right. campus. Um, and then we also cover all the surrounding counties, so that's... Uh, Nash, obviously. Certainly. Um, Johnston, Pitt, Wayne, Green, and Edgecombe. Edgecombe. And but your office does not cover Halifax, or it does not. Okay. Um, actually, 
personally I wish we did because I, sure. I would have preferred us to have helped in some situations but no we do it's a 45 mile radius okay. um, some cases we can go a little further but normally we have nurses so busy that they have to stay within 45 miles mm -hmm. of the office mm -hmm. I, Joey and I have a lot of clients in Halifax County so who actually handles Halifax I don't um, I know the one that my grandparents used was Kindred um, okay. mm -hmm. but it honestly is only one or two in that area whereas in Wilson it, in these areas it's five or six mm -hmm. it's only one or two in Halifax right. um, so there is a great need there and I, I have pushed for us to expand but right. it takes a workforce too to right. it sure it does so that's definitely a, to, a to county that's there. in need <laughs> yeah yeah and Shirley you're speaking about counties Erica you're speaking about WHIG as we all know here are 17 counties so I see where you want to go outside mm -hmm. of that 45 so I'm sure there's some listening people out here now that would like to have your expertise mm -hmm. maybe not having access to it right. mm -hmm. do they just contact you yes because we um, our parent company LHC group is a nationwide company uh, with over 800 locations mm -hmm. so they let us operate locally as small town home health of Wilson mm -hmm. as we prefer but right. we have their national backing on things um, so we have an office in um, Henderson we have an office okay. in uh, Fayetteville we have one in Raleigh and all the way east across That's the country so we can always find a mm -hmm. branch that can help you if we're not the one that can okay. and I can help facilitate that through my number as well Good. you and I were talking earlier and you mentioned a program that y'all do for caregivers kind of educating them on, on diabetic uh, chronic disease management or mm -hmm. something that so we um, it for home health as long as there's a chronic disease or some kind of disease management so you've got diabetes COPD CHF all of those are qualifying admitting diagnoses for home health because Medicare puts a big push on prevention mm -hmm. so if you can get us in there while you're sort of doing it you're sort of taking your meds right and you're okay but if we can make it better they're all for approving that request and getting us in there to med management so we a good half of our patients are probably have some kind of med management system in where we do their meds every month or every week um, and that's the only thing we do but that is a skilled service mm -hmm. um, and so, so what, what actually are you doing so we are doing their pill pours so if there's someone lives alone they can't you go in there and they've got a bag of medicines right. mm -hmm. most older Americans have more than 10 medicines in their cabinet and they're not all over the counter they're old prescriptions we go in there and start from scratch um, all of our admissions get a journal where we log all their current meds and they get a bag to keep their meds in and they're instructed to take that bag and that journal to every visit to their doctor Okay. so that things stay the same because side effects can affect in yes. different ways and yes. so the same way with the diabetes we manage insulin um, we also do nutrition counseling because diabetes can spiral mm -hmm. if nutrition is mm -hmm. not watched so we can do all those kind of watch management type things where we go in once or twice a week to keep people out of the hospital Erica I, got, I just wow. I know Cheryl our listening audience has learned something here and I don't know why a 30-minute 30, 30 program just flies by. We're already <laughs> wow. halfway through. But folks, sitting at home on your couch, before we go to break, we need you to think about, and I'm going to ask Erica to give you her telephone number, if there are questions you have for your parents, for yourself. Yes. We mm -hmm. want you to reach out to Erica and the home health. Erica, what's that telephone number before we go um, to break? It's 252-290-8303. That's my direct number. And if I don't have the answer to your question, I know who will. Outstanding. We're going to be right back after a short break. We thank you. Stay tuned. Looking forward to telling you a little bit more. We'll be right back.
Hi, Cheryl Braswell with Statewide Insurers Group. Are you turning 65 and do you have questions about your Medicare options? Let Statewide Insurers Group help you choose the insurance plan that best suits your needs now. We at Statewide Insurers Group are all things Medicare. We're here and can help you through this challenging time by phone, by email, or if you prefer, come by the office. We're following all protocols during this difficult time. Folks, relationships matter. You and your family have important questions. We have the correct answers. You do not want to put this off. Act today. Give us a call at Statewide Insurance Group. Our number is 252-316-8166. Welcome back to Senior Living Today. That is a quick break and we're right back here with you. Glad to have you on board. And again, we ask, give us a call. The questions you have are the most important. We're gonna jump right back into it with Erica talking about home health, our co-host Cheryl Braswell. Cheryl, what's the next question that we had asked? A uh, couple of things that I had written down. What, this is always comes up in the conversation. Who pays for this, Erica? How's, how can this be paid for? Yep, that's a great question. So um, if you have Medicare, Medicare covers home health services at 100%. That doctor's order signifies that you need it, and Medicare says, he says you need it, we're going to pay for it. Um, most other insurances do have a home health um, carve-out where there's little to no copay. Mm -hmm. I would suggest, um, now home health can, all insurances will allow for home health. What mm -hmm. you don't know up front is the, the bill you may get later. Medicare will have no bill. Um, most insurance, you may have like a 20% type thing. Mm -hmm. um, it just depends on the different insurance. Like I said, Medicare covers it and all the other ones will, but you have to check your policy individually to see mm -hmm. what kind of home health portion you may be responsible for. Right. And it may be zero sometimes. Right. Erica, adding to that, and not to interrupt here because you've got a great flow going, but you said 20%. Could that be, for our viewing audience, Cheryl, a supplement that could be added with Medicare to that, assist that? Okay, that's, that was what I was going <laughs> to ask. Um, so, say my yeah, again, my dad falls down, breaks his leg, and, and he yes, you know, Mr. Brass is going to qualify for some home care for the next five, six weeks. His regular Medicare um, will pay for this. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's no med, Medicare is the only one. There's no questions. Okay. As long as you qualified for that home health, you qualify for them to pay for the duration of your home health needs. Okay. Okay. So that's that's the easiest one to say yes because all the other ones are a yes, but sometimes you may have a bill come later, mm -hmm. um, and okay. it may not be much of anything. It may be nothing, but I, I've had a, a patient call angry at us because they got a seven thousand dollar bill, mm -hmm. but their insurance they thought they had home health coverage and they didn't. Right. So that's where they would have needed a supplement to, right. <laughs> to cover that right. gap. And you know, that's where we as statewide insurance group can provide a lot of help because there are policies out there that will pay for mm -hmm. home care without That was having, the reason I kind of asked that 20% yeah. question for yeah. you and Eric. There are things out there that, that will take care of that. Yeah. Uh, and so again you can give us a call on those questions and, and we can help you out with that. Mm -hmm. um, you also talked about recently y'all have been started a dementia care program? Or? Yes, so we are an agency that can accept COVID positive patients. Um, so that kind of stemmed nationwide. There was a need because patients are not wanting to go into skilled nursing facilities and assisted livings because they're essentially being shut out from their families. Mm -hmm. So if you go into one, your family most of the time cannot visit. Very few are allowing visitors at least. Um, the skilled ones are pretty much not at all. Erica, can you repeat that? For our viewing audience, that is critical. That was one of the yes. calls we had. Can <laughs> they go in? And you just touched on So it, around here, at least, all the SNFs, which is a skilled nursing facility, they're shut down. No visitors, um, unless it's a compassion type visit, which right. is end of life. Um, <clears throat> assisted living, some of them are allowing visitors. 
um, but it's, it just depends on the organization. So th the need for home health has risen because right. mm -hmm. they're choosing, well, I, I need something. I know mm -hmm. I need more care probably, but can we bridge this gap until? Mm -hmm. So my company came out with a dementia program to kind of fine tune um, how to, to manage and help those families with dementia patients in their mm -hmm. homes because um, they're a very different type of patient. They're not yes. hurting or have an mm -hmm. ill or a, a mm -hmm. wound or something. They are, it's, they're themselves, but they're not. So they need mm -hmm. a different kind of coaching. And we actually have a um, three-step process that will show you their cognition level mm -hmm. and how to treat that patient and train those families how to respond to certain actions. And I know we've talked okay. about bringing up when they were 18, what did they do? And that can snap them right back out of a fit. Mm -hmm. So there's yep. certain things that these clinicians sure. are trained to do and trained to talk about in memory books. We do personalized memory books. Mm -hmm. So it's triggering those old thoughts that's and emotions right. so that they are not frustrated mm -hmm. right so right. that's that's really been a big program and we we can um, admit just for that dementia program or we can add on that service to someone who's getting already services with right. us that is tremendous uh, if you've ever had to deal with that <clears throat> that is a tough and that goes for Alzheimer's situation. too they yeah. kind of fall into the same category mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're also able to work with Alzheimer's mm -hmm. patients? In that as long as it's not a behavioral to where we can't handle them, but right. it, at that point they really should be in a facility. Right. Like, And I don't mean mental facility, I mean a nursing facility right. anyway, because they're just a, almost a danger to themselves if they're yeah. so far gone and they're mobile. Understood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You also talked about uh, Breathe Easy program is that tied in? With yes, the COVID so situation? that is part of the COVID. Um, okay, it's it's a respiratory program that comes with a um, a little kazoo looking device. Mm -hmm. That's the best <laughs> way I can describe it, and it is strengthening those respiratory muscles on inhalation and exhalation. So not just one way. So what that means is when you get bronchitis or if you have COPD or pneumonia, you can fight that virus better because those your respiratory muscles are muscles mm -hmm. and if you don't right. strengthen those they atrophy and they can't fight off those illnesses as well so mm -hmm. any reason to keep your respiratory muscles better than COVID I don't think I've ever seen so oh, that damn. program was developed with not only for COVID because we have a ton of COPD mm -hmm. and respiratory illnesses in this area but COVID is a prime indicator of why you would need those muscles strengthened yes that's amazing. That is very interesting. When you mentioned the the kazoo for the breathing exercises, I had a friend who had some tremendous respiratory problems. Gosh, ten or fifteen years ago, and that was something literally they gave mm -hmm. him to the kazoo to, to play with. <laughs> yep, and they're trying to jumble up what's in here so right. that it doesn't stick. Right. Yeah. And get infected. Interesting. Interesting. Um, you also mentioned at one point a fall prevention program. Mm -hmm. So we have a ton of programs. Every, yeah. Pretty much every disease process we can manage. Um, and the fall prevention, we do a fall risk assessment for every admission, whether it's a nursing admission or a therapy or both. Mm -hmm. um, and some people don't need it, but some mm -hmm. people we uncover, they've got 16 rugs lining from their bedroom to their kitchen that they could trip over every day. Mm -hmm. yep. Or how are they safely getting on the toilet? Do they need a bar? Do they need a shower chair? Things like that, they may not have ever known that would have made their lives so much easier, but it's preventing, once again, prevention, it's preventing right. that fall so that you don't end up with a broken leg in the ER. And Cheryl, you never realize a lot of this. Maybe our viewing audience does. But Erica, you've touched on so many topics. Can you actually build a program like Cheryl is asking to fit the particular need of the viewing audience, of the client, of the male, of the female? Right. So if, if someone's like, I, mom's at home and I'm scared because I work all day long, a fall risk assessment is a good way to get clinical eyes in there the same mm -hmm. way our continence control program. Mm -hmm. Most older adults over 80 are incontinent and so in some form or fashion so that's a way to get us in there let us do an assessment and then we can admit them if they have chf diabetes copd to monitor wow. and then you're not admitting them because they fail and broke exactly. their shoulder you're mon mm -hmm. you're admitting them because they need 
four visits a month to make sure they're taking their meds, right. to make sure they're taking their insulin, to make sure they, because we have a 24 seven nurse line too. So when you're on okay. our service, you get that nurse line, you get us, and you get, um, if you want it, like a little life alert button that mm -hmm. comes with our service. It's called the Personal Emergency Response mm -hmm. System, and mm -hmm. it's a necklace, and it's the button. Yes. So they're never truly alone when they've got that and the 24-hour nurse line. So it's just, an, I think people don't utilize it as much as they should as right. for prevention. It's always an afterthought. So, okay, let me make sure I heard you right on that. If they are admitted for, you know, for whatever the situation is, when, when are they eligible for having the like the it's the button? The whole time they're on our service, they can have that free of charge. It works wow. off of cell towers, not a landline. Right. right. Um, and it is, uh, I think, thirty dollars if you continue after we discharge the patient. So you can wow. keep it forever. It's like twenty nine ninety nine a month. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's that I'm tremendous. sure would be, as mm -hmm. Cheryl said, a lifeline. Yeah. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know why 30 minutes goes so quick. Yes. I know that you have learned an awful lot. I know I have, sitting here listening to Erica, listening to the great question Cheryl has come up with. We encourage you, and Erica, I'm, I'm going to prepare you. I'm going to give you that telephone number one more time. But as you look at senior living today, let that relate to your living at home. Yeah. The questions you call in to us at Statewide are questions that are pertinent to someone in this 17-county area. Erica, please, if you will, give us a little close of how they get in touch with you and any question they may have, how they can reach you. Yes, sir. So if you have any questions or just want to kind of spitball about ideas or next steps, um, my number is 252-290-8303. Um, that's also a 24-7 number, so if you need me, um, that is my number and like I said we've got a ton of programs that can fit the needs of all types of, of patients and people in your lives. So. Great. For Erica, myself and Mr. Braswell, Cheryl, we want to thank you for tuning in to Senior Living today. The next program we have will be coming in in two weeks. You want to tune in for it. It's just as exciting as this one's been today. We thank you. We bless you. We look forward to hearing from you. Have a great evening. Thank you again for tuning in to Senior Living today. Thank you.